Thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. And you know, I'm, I'm the uh, victim of the post-launch first speaker. But um, anyway, uh, five minutes. Our space is trying to solve the specialty drug problem. Um, this chart shows sort of three things of interest. One is it's a very large market spend today, about $120, $125 billion, or 33% of all drug spend is specialty drugs. But when you look at every objective projection, Millman, the PBM houses, everybody else, that's growing 20% a year. So if you just fast forward in three, four years, uh, especially drugs will be 60% of all drug spend. Now here's the interesting thing to keep in mind. No more than three to 5% of patients are on specialty drugs. So, and you know, the number of transactions, pills, infusion, you could just equate that to maybe three to 5%. So think about in 2020, if you're a payer, you're going to be paying transactionally, right, like they do today, where 5% of the transactions represent 60% of the cost. It's going to be a new paradigm, we believe, in three to four years for payment, value-based care, everything specific to drug payments. Uh, the other thing interesting of specialty drugs, by the way, is they're generally uh, under this Orphan Drug Act, so they get this sort of special treatment for approvals, fast track, lower volumes of patients to do approvals on. Uh, after all, how many cystic fibrosis patients are you going to be able to recruit? It's not like Tylenol. So uh, they recognize that. The problem with that is what you see in a trial of 100 patients or 150 or 50 when you get approved isn't necessarily statistically what you might see in the real world. And that's a big problem. And these are not trivial issues. And that's why you see a recent study came out after approval, one third of these drugs have new, very serious clinical issues. Uh, side effects, uh, recall, label warnings, uh, nothing you and I would uh, you know, raise our hands for. But of course, a lot of these are potentially curative, life-saving, et cetera. And often patients don't have another choice. Um, and the other piece is there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. Quintiles IMS just came out with their report that says for the foreseeable future, is essentially one a week in terms of approval. So you can imagine what that might do in terms of this continuous curve. If you're a payer, uh, this line, that trend in six years adds $1,000 in premium per member. So not just for specialty patients, not for this to the two or 3%, but for all of us here, our health plan would be charging uh, another $1,000 in premium. That's just untenable, okay? Um, as a startup, and there's a lot of fellow startups here, what I love most about this chart, I don't have to explain my hockey stick projections, okay? Because this is unusual to have a market that is essentially growing organically 300% in six years. So I can ride that wind a little bit. Uh, what is our business? Um, we are a digital clinical specialty patient monitoring solution. So we use technology heavily integrated with patients connected with providers uh, to manage uh, their specialty condition, focusing obviously on the drug, but their specialty condition as well. Um, uniquely, we have 150 clinical pathways. Uh, we believe we're the only commercially uh, uh, for sale uh, protocol business and specialty. Obviously, academic health centers will have their own you know, uh, decision trees, et cetera. But I think we're the only commercially, as far as we know, with 150 evidence-based protocols. Those protocols are embedded in a software that's proprietary to us. It's actually a, a CMS certified EMR, and we've converted that to an ambulatory patient management workflow. And then finally, we have a digital therapy patient app, so they get to see their uh, treatment protocol on their app to comply with. And we use biometric devices as well for real-time clinical monitoring. Um, our payers, are, are the buyers are largely people who foot the bill, right, the payer market, and the payer market is pretty diverse, uh, looking for savings, quality, and a whole value-based care, but certainly the providers, and we've heard from a few up here as well, um, not only, you know, to implement evidence-based care, but to obviously have direct engagement with patients and succeed in value-based arrangements as well. But we're also getting traction with pharma. Our data is rich, uh, but our platform can also support, you know, phase four launch uh, studies as well. Um, our value, clearly, you know, spend and trend, that's what uh, speaks to payer markets. Uh, and we produce, you know, a forecast of 8,000 per patient that we touch, which is substantial. 
Uh, we don't have dials of this right at the top. What we have is this. So this is where we achieve our financials by focusing on the clinical value, the outcomes, and the efficacy. What are we looking for? Obviously, uh, we're financed to date privately. We're looking for a round. We do have uh, a customer launched in April um, and two more pending before the end of the month and also looking for um, strategic personnel advisors. So you'll see me around if you uh, want to get a hold of me and ask questions. Thank you.